yes uh, uh, well dear students uh, in the last class we have discussed here shape of the orbital so uh, as well we were discussed uh, they were, were shapes of s orbital and shapes of p orbital and we have to discuss today in this session so shapes of d orbital so let's start this particular session with uh, so shapes of the d orbital so we'll see that uh, what are the shapes that d orbital would occupy here so go with that particular thing shape of the d orbital see orbital is an element here the region or a space around the nucleus where there is a probability of finding the electron is going to be maximum okay so we have here four types of orbital one will be s it has shape spherical and another p orbital it has shape dumbbell and we are right now going to discuss here that is d orbital so we'll see that what will be the shape of the d orbital and what are the you know uh, some important stuff we are going to learn by uh, studying that particular concept here okay so yes guys in the very first uh, in d subshell in d subshell there will be five d orbitals or they over why because in d orbit in d subshell what happen it, it completely depends on that here their l and as well as that ml value that's why based on that ml value that d subshell it could have that here five d orbitals so we'll see that what kind of uh, so orbitals will be there which is present in that particular d subshell so let's discuss guys so uh, let's focus on this particular thing here in d subshell there will be there will be five there will be five d orbitals or there okay and those are that is d x y d y z d z x and d x square minus y square and d z square so guys shapes of the d orbital is element here means in the case of d subshell we are going to have here five d orbitals so those are d x y d y z d z x d x square minus y square and d z square so how we are going to get here a five orbitals in the d subshell means it's completely depend on that here so what is the l value for d orbital as we know that here so l value for s zero l value for p that is one l value for d that is two and l value for f will be three so based on these particular values we are going to have corresponding so orbitals guys isn't it <coughs> so by this way we are going to have here a 5d orbitals based on that here l value of that particular d subshell so the l value means so let's take down the in d subshell for d subshell for d subshell l value will be here 2 isn't it so that's why there ml value can be you know ranges from minus l to plus l so i'm going to show you guys that is how that uh, d subshell having your 5d orbitals so this is the thing here okay so then what might be that here ml value minus 2 2 plus 2 why because l value is being here 2 and ml value that has to be lies between here minus l2 plus l that's why ml value is to be here minus 2 2 plus 2 in between that what will be the so number we are going to get here we'll take down minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 so just count down guys here 1 2 3 4 5 so these numbers we are symbolically represented as in here dxy dyz dzx dx square minus y square and dz square so this is how we are going to get here 5 d orbitals in the case of d subshell so it is completely depend on that here l and as well as that their ml value guys okay these number can be represented by their particular corresponding symbolically we are going to be represented as dxy and 2 dz square guys so this is how we are going to get here a 5 d orbitals in the case of d subshell and have to focus on these particular things so guys we have here a 5d orbitals among that 5d orbitals three or three means among these three particular among that five so three of that particular orbitals are going to be lies in between that axis okay i mean to say is that we have here 5d orbitals among that 5d orbitals three of them are oriented in between the axis 
in between the axis and rest of the two are oriented along the axis. We will see that how they are looks like here. So, before that, okay. So, since we are seeing here shape of the orbital, so we have to know here shape, the shape of the d orbital here nothing but here double, double dumbbell shape, double dumbbell shape, double dumbbell shape guys. So, this is not, nothing but here shape of the d orbital. So, shape of s orbital will be here spherical and shape of p is nothing but here dumbbell, but here the d orbital having the shape that is double dumbbell shape. So, as I told you that, so we have that is 5 d orbitals here, among that 5, 3 of them are, 3 of them means d x y, d y z, d z x are oriented in between the axis. So, these particular orbitals are oriented in between the, in between the axis, in between the axis and the rest of the two are d x square minus y square and d z square these two particular orbitals are going to be you know oriented along the axis so between the axis are d x y d y z d z x and along the axis are here d x square minus y square and as well as that d z square let let's take down so oriented oriented along the axis guys along the axis so, uh, we will show you the diagram of this particular, you know, shape of this particular d sub shell will be here. Okay, we will take down guys. Okay. So, this is the limit here dxy, dyz, dzx and dx square minus y square and dz square. So, let us discuss the shape of these particular orbitals right now. Yes, guys. Uh, so, I have here. Suppose if you consider there is x axis which is y axis. See here we are going to have here 4 lobes in this particular case we are going to have here 4 lobes 1, 2, 3, 4 ok double dumbbell shape nothing but here which consists of and here 4 lobes so those particular lobes are opposite to one another here so these particular lobes are opposite to one another and these two particular lobes are opposite to one another so this particular space indicating here so in this particular portion or in this particular region the probability of any the electron is going to be maximum and since these particular so these particular lobes are oriented in between the axis so which are that particular axis that is x and y that's why we can take an as in here d x y d x y so d x y is nothing but here that is it's being a shape of that orbital so that is double dumbbell shape so in this particular region the probability of any the electron is going to be maximum and these lobes are going to be you know oriented in between the axis so those axis are here x and y that's why we can take an as in here d x y orbital so it would be like that suppose if you have here another If you consider d, this is y axis and this is z axis, then we have here d x y means d y z, d y z. So, this is in this particular portion or region what happened here, the probability of any the electron is going to be maximum guys, okay. Next to that. So, and those lobes are here, how to focus there over, present between the axis, means oriented between the axis, okay. So, ultimately we have here z x, suppose if you consider here x axis and z axis means, so these particular lobes are oriented in between that here z and x axis, that is why we can recognize as in here d x y, d d z x orbital d z x orbital and each particular orbital here having corresponding node except d z square. So, it has a 
definite um, it has a specific shape there over which is you know quite different from that of uh, these particular orbitals we will see that ok need not to worry about it. So, again I am just having here one more orbital that is fourth orbital called as see guys you just see that here the particular orbital what I am in so representing here these particular lobes are present along the axis right so present along the axis so here between the axis so in between the axis lobes are going to be oriented but in this particular case the lobes are oriented along the axis okay that's why we have to take in here that particular orbital as in here d x square minus y square d x square minus y square why because these particular lobes are oriented along the axis means both x and as well as that y axis that's why we have to take on this particular orbital as in here d x square minus y square so this is the scenario here so ultimately we have one more particular you know orbital that is d z square so we'll see that how the d z square will be looks like here so i just have to write here guys I am going to rub this one. So, shape of that particular d orbital is to be here double dumbbell shape. So, we are going to have this particular thing here. So, let us take down that is d z square. So, d z square which is quite different from that of rest of the d orbital ok. It has some sort of a ring form. So, which is d z square means these particular lobes are going to be oriented along the axis guys. So, that is why we have to take here. So, this particular orbital as a here d z square d z square and you know we have here uh, all the 5 orbitals here right now that is d x y d y z d z x and d x square minus y square and d z square ultimately. Since we have an here orbital means there must be some sort of node has to be there right we have to find out here a particular nodal plane which are present in these particular orbitals. Since orbital there means a particular orbital which contains nodal plane also is not it. So, we will see that particular nodal plane of this particular orbital. So, what will be the nodal plane present in the d x y orbital d y z and d x z x and d x square y square and d z square we will see that. So, guys since here the probability of finding the electron is going to be present along that uh, means between the x and y axis means there must be a nodal plane that has to be present in between that here y z and as well as that z x axis and each re orbital except d z square orbital having that here two corresponding nodal plane guys except d z square orbital. So, we have here 4 1 means 4 d x y d y z d z x and d x square minus y square. So, these particular orbitals having a two nodal planes ok. So, which are those means we will discuss that one. So, if probability of any electron that has to be present in between that x and y axis means there must be a nodal plane in the case of in the case of d x y orbital would be here that is y z and z x y z and z x. But in the case of d y z and since here the probability of finding the electron that has to be maximum in between that y and as well as that z axis there must be here a node that has to be present in between x y and as well as that z x axis. So, that is why here in the case of uh, in the case of d y z orbital the nodal plane must have to be present at which particular axis guys x y and z x axis. So, which are most important thing we have to know these particular scenario here. So, these are most important thing guys ok. So, next if you come to that here d z x. So, in the case of d z x where will be that uh, you know nodal plane that has to be situated. So, can you guess guys obviously if that probability of any electron is present at z x axis in between z x axis means. So, rest of the axis what here we are going to get x y and as well as that y z obviously the nodal plane that has to be present here at x y axis and y z axis. So, this is the simple scenario here very much important concept guys ok and in the case of d x square minus y square guys. So, I have to focus on this particular thing here since here lobes are oriented along the axis 
along the axis hence we are going to get here a two particular angular node at about 45 degree angle okay we are going to here two angular node here two angular angular node node about 45 degree about 45 degree so we are going to get in the case of dx square minus y square orbital the angular node is going to be here 2 that is about 45 degree at 45 degree okay not about that is at 45 degree we are going to get here that is 2 angular node but as in the case of dz square guys how to focus on that here okay so this particular dz square since it has donut shape isn't it it is something like you know a donut shape like that a ring form a ring form donut shape it has something like that you know isn't it so that's why this particular dz dz square orbital it doesn't have any kind of nodes here okay so dz square it does not have it does not have any nodal plane because it has what kind of shape that is donut shape it has donut shape it has donut shape guys so because of this particular thing so it doesn't have an any kind of so nodal plane in it okay so this is all about here the shapes of d orbital and so since we are studying here shapes of orbital means we should have to know here so what will be the actual shape of the d orbital that is double dumbbell shape and s orbital that is spherical and p is the limit here dumbbell shape and this is all about here a particular so uh, important information regarding here d orbital and one more thing we have to know always that so since we have in here ml value right ml value about here uh, from minus 2 to plus 2 minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 okay so in this particular case guys we have to know that dxy having that here ml value that is plus or minus 2 either it may be plus 2 or and minus 2 okay that is a completely a theoretical concept guys you should have to know that value of these particular uh, orbitals that is ml value of these particular orbitals will be here like that for dyz for dyz ml value will be here plus or minus 1 means either it may be a minus 1 or it may be a plus 1 whatever it is so ultimately dyz orbital having here ml value that is about plus or minus 1 and here also the dzx value that in the, in the dzx orbital the ml value could be like that that is also plus or minus 1 plus or minus 1 and dx square minus y square in this case that ml value is going to be plus or minus 2 and in the case of dz square that is ml value is going to be plus or minus 0 is going to be plus or minus 0 so uh, this is all about here you know shapes of the d orbital okay guys so this is all about the thing so next uh, uh, we'll move on to that here one more important uh, orbital that is uh, f orbital so this f orbital it doesn't have a, uh, more information okay why because in the case of uh, f orbital means in the case of f sub shell there will be seven orbitals are there over okay and that if you come to that shape of that f orbital means that shape of the f orbital is going to be very complicated we could not find a still a proper structure for that particular proper shape uh, for that particular f orbital so uh, we uh, do not uh, you know have a, a much information regarding uh, f orbital so this is uh, more than enough for you guys okay f sub shell which consists of here seven orbitals okay and it does not have an a proper shape means their particular shape is going to be a very complicated guys okay so this is nothing but here so this is all about here f orbital okay uh, next uh, we will discuss one of the most important uh, concept in the structure of autumn chapter and which is one of the most important milestone if you can say that okay one of the most important milestone of that structure of autumn is nothing but here that is uh, one concept will be there that is quantum number we will discuss that particular concept right now so i am going to rub this particular thing so take a screenshot or a, make a note down okay yes
Yes, guys. Yes, let's go with that here. One of the most important concept that is quantum number, very much important, guys. So we have there over a uh, you know a uh, number of information we are actually we are going to get uh, in this particular concept. We'll discuss one by one here. Okay, that is quantum numbers. So what is mean by quantum numbers here? See the thing is that, so if you want to know a complete information about of an electrons means we have to study here quantum numbers, okay complete information in the sense, so energy wise, shapes wise and their angular momentum wise and spin wise. Okay, if you know if you know that these informations regarding your electrons, so we have to study here that quantum numbers. Okay, one of the most interesting and important concept, guys. Don't be so neglect this particular concept. So just focus on this thing here, very much important. So let's go with this particular concept right now. Quantum numbers is the name, but here the thing is that the complete description of an electron, the complete description of an electron with respect to their energy and their angular momentum and orientation of magnetic moment and spin can be given by here four numbers that four numbers we can call to be as in here quantum numbers and which are those particular numbers here so one will be here principal quantum number second one will be here azimuthal quantum number third one magnetic quantum number and ultimately last but not the least that is spin quantum number. So with the help of these particular four quantum number we are going to rectify means we are going to have an air complete description of an here electron guys. So we will discuss that particular thing. So let us take down quantum number is nothing but here the complete the complete description the complete description of an electron of an electron with respect to with respect to its energy okay and angular momentum angular momentum next orientation of orientation of magnetic moment orientation of magnetic moment and spin spin can be given by can be given by four quantum numbers means four numbers so that number we can call it as in here the four quantum numbers is called four numbers is called here quantum number is called quantum number so and what are those particular quantum number here a very first here we have that is which are those four numbers i just told you that here right four numbers so which are those four numbers means first number uh, first quantum number will be here that is principal quantum number that can be indicated by that symbol small n second one here azimuthal azimuthal quantum number can be represented by the symbol here l and third one that is magnetic magnetic quantum number that can be indicated by the symbol here ml means small it has ml small m and d that is spin quantum number spin quantum number indicated by the symbol here yes okay so these are important uh, so numbers that can gives that complete description of an electron in an particular atom. So hence that number we can call it to be as near quantum number. So right now we will discuss here one by one here in the very first we shall go with here principal 
quantum number. So, what are the stuff we are going to get in this particular so uh, principal quantum number? We'll discuss case one by one. Okay, let's take down. Yes. principal quantum number can be represented by the symbol here n so yes guys this principal quantum number very first was proposed by here and niels bohr okay so who proposed here principal quantum number obviously niels bohr so niels bohr he is the scientist so, I was the scientist who proposed here a principal quantum number, ok. So, very first we have to know here this particular thing. Niels Bohr was a scientist who proposed here principal quantum number, ok. This is the very much important thing. And next to that here, so uh, we are going to you know having that here a number of information uh, about here principal quantum number, you have to focus on that here each and every statement, ok. So, very next. So, guys, principal quantum number can be indicated by here symbol n. That is why this particular n it has some sort of values. Okay. So, what are those values? We will see here. Okay. The n can have values, n can have values. Suppose if you want to express in terms of number means it will be here 1, 2, 3, 4, and one particular thing you have to keep in your mind n cannot be 0. Okay, n value it cannot be 0 guys. So, it has that values that it could be here 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on so. Or if you want to express in the case of shells means k, l, m and n. Okay. So, just like that if you consider one particular first energy level, second energy level, third and fourth or there is k shell, l shell, m shell, n shell. So, these things can be represented by that here n values means energy level that is it ok. So, very next ok that principal quantum number you know majorly it going to be indicating here that energy and the size of the orbit energy and size of the orbit which is most important thing guys. So, what here principal quantum number is going to be indicating means so that is completely indicating here so that is size and as well as that energy of an orbit energy of an orbit ok. So, it indicates it indicates size and energy of the orbit size and energy of the orbit. Guys one thing we have to know here as you can increase this here n value obviously that size and as well as that energy of that particular orbit is also going to be increases is not it we have to know that we have to aware on this particular thing guys. So, if you are if you are wanted to increase here n value obviously their particular size and as well as energy is also going to be increases ok. So, hence write it down ok as you as n value increases n value increases energy and size of the orbit is also size of the orbit is also increases increases. So, this is the most important thing guys ok. Suppose say for example, you have here 1s orbital, 2s orbital, 3s orbital, 4s orbital. So, since uh, so you know uh, as in the case of while we are studying here shape of that s circle then i just told you there over okay but as you guys know here also okay if you if you increasing here n value see here 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 to 4 means as you increases here n value okay the thing is that the energy and size of that particular corresponding orbital is also going to be increases this is the thing here nothing so much here okay this is the scenario you have to know this particular thing <coughs> Okay, guys. So, by the way, we have to know one more important thing also in this case of uh, a principal quantum number. Okay. So, since we are talking about here orbit means, so we have to find out the number of means the maximum number of electron that has to be present in that orbit. 
so then how we are going to calculate that particular scenario here that particular thing how we are going to calculate guys so we have one particular formula for that okay very simple formula we have in order to calculate a maximum number of electrons present in that particular orbit can be given by a simple formula that is 2 n square 2 n square isn't it very simple guys so let me tell you that how we are going to get that actual that maximum number of electrons in any particular orbit we'll tell you I, i'll tell you that don't worry about it okay but write down right now okay the maximum maximum number of electron maximum number of electron present in present in an orbit can be given by the formula that is 2 n square 2 n square suppose let us assume that we have to calculate here the total number of electrons which are present in that second orbit second orbit then what might be that n value means here n value indicating here 1 2 3 4 means one is the limit here first orbit second is the limit here second orbit three is the limit here fourth or third orbit and four is the limit fourth orbit so this is the thing means energy levels nothing but okay now we are going to find out that here the total number of electrons that has to be present in that uh, second orbit we don't know how, how many electrons are there over but with the help of this particular formula we are easily calculate right okay so let's take down suppose i am going to calculate here the total number of electrons present in that second orbit means n will be 2 then what will be the formula here 2 n square let's substitute guys so n is limit here 2 2 square what will be there okay 2 into 2 so 2 square is 4 2 into 4 8 so what will be the maximum number of electrons present in that uh, second orbit will be 8 so let me give that some clarification here if you want so if you go with here k shell means in that k shell there will be only one orbital that is s orbital isn't it in l shell there will be two orbital one will be s and as well as that p so in that case of s orbital the maximum accommodation of electron will be here 2 but in the case of p sub shell the maximum accommodation of electron will be here 6 Two plus six will be eight. So we got here answer. Isn't it very simple, right? So this is the thing, guys. So this is how to calculate here total number of electrons present in an a corresponding orbit. So we have to find out that a proper orbit. Thereby we are going to easily calculate here the total number of electron means maximum number of electrons present in an any particular orbit here. So this is the thing. Next, we'll talk about here some sort of orbitals, isn't it? so since uh, means as yes, we can here have one particular formula for in order to calculate maximum number of electrons so here we also know here one particular formula that is total number of orbitals that has to be present in that main energy level okay how much of orbital we are going to have in the case of a uh, main energy level so in order to calculate that particular thing we have one particular formula that is n square n square so here n square indicating the total number of orbitals present in that main energy level main energy level so thereby we are going to get here a corresponding orbitals that has to be present in that particular you know energy level so suppose we have to calculate here the no total number of orbital in that first energy level second energy level third energy level fourth energy level so then we actually have one particular formula right in order to calculate this particular stuff isn't it let's take down the total the total number of electron means total number of orbitals orbital present in present in main main energy main energy level can be given by one particular formula that is n square what is that formula here n square suppose guys so we don't know that how many orbitals are going to present in that third orbit third orbit so we have to calculate so i don't know in that third orbit how many orbitals are going to be there then what we have to do we have to use that one formula is n square what is the n value here 3 isn't it so you have to take here so 3 square is limit here 9 obviously we are going to get here nine orbital in the case of third orbit how means so let's see that let us assume that is k l and m this is n shell 
so in that m shell what happen there will be s or plus to be there means s sub shell has to be there p sub p sub shell has to be there and d sub shell has to be there okay so in that s sub shell availability of orbital will be here one in the case of p sub shell availability of orbital will be here three in the case of d orbit d sub shell availability of orbital will be here five okay that is three in in p sub shell three orbitals means px py pz in d five orbitals are there dxy dyz dzx dx square minus y square and dz square let's count down here 5 plus 3 8 8 plus 1 9 so here according to this formula also we are going to get here 9 isn't it so this is how to calculate here the total number of orbitals present in an particular energy level whatever will be the energy level has to be there so with the help of this particular formula we are going to get here a actual number of orbitals present in that particular so main energy level okay if you want to calculate electrons means then we have to go with that particular formula in the case of orbit okay ultimately the last point regarding here principal quantum number will be since here bohr's we have come across with here bohr's ramic model right okay so in this particular case so the angular momentum of an electron in the case of orbit bohr has already given in his particular atomic model okay the angular momentum of an electron in the case of orbit will equal to here which equal to here nh by 2 pi so this is the main important thing guys so we have to know here what will be the angular momentum of that particular electron in orbit will be here nh by 2 pi take down the angular the angular momentum momentum of an electron electron in an orbit not to be in that case of orbital so orbital in the case of orbital is going to be different guys okay we have some sort of a different equation we are going to get there over okay the angular momentum of an electron in the case of orbit must be here n h by 2 pi which is integral multiple of an here h by 2 pi that is nothing but okay so this is that uh, important information regarding here principal quantum number principal quantum number very much important thing guys have to know that here okay so let's take down okay that first principal quantum number can be proposed was proposed by here niels bohr and that uh, principal quantum number is being represented by n and it has some sort of values that is 1 2 3 4 r in terms of you want to express in terms of shells means k shell l shell m and n shell okay as you can increase here n value that size and energy of that orbit is also going to be increases and mainly that principal quantum number can be indicated here so indicates here size and as well as that energy of the particular orbit so then as you can increase the n value these two particular factor is also going to be increases and that maximum number of electrons present in an orbit can be calculated by the formula 2n square and the total number of orbitals present in that main energy level can be given by formula here n square okay and ultimately the angular momentum of an electron in an orbit would be here nh by 2 pi so these are the most important things in that principal quantum number so next go with that here uh, another quantum number that is uh, azimuthal quantum number we'll see that what are the important stuff we are going to see there over azimuthal azimuthal quantum azimuthal quantum number okay so that azimuthal quantum number can be represented by the symbol here l okay so guys this azimuthal quantum number in the very first was proposed by here one particular scientist that is summer field okay summer field so he was the scientist uh, who first proposed here azimuthal quantum number summer field okay and here yes here n can have some sort of values here also the same l it could have some sort of values here okay so what are those particular value and before that that particular value of l can be depend on that here n values can be depend on that here n completely n okay so the thing is that before writing that l values so what are the factor that l is going to be depend we have to write that particular stuff here okay l value l value can be 
डिपेंड ऑन डिपेंड ऑन यन मीन्स यल विच इक्वल्स टू एन माइनस वन वी शुड नो दिस पर्टिकुलर फॉर्मुला ओके सो एंड वॉट विल दल वैल्यू हियर सो अजू विदाल क्वांट नंबर वैल्यूज वॉट विल दैट यल वैल्यू सो यल कैन हैव वैल्यूज यल कैन हैव वैल्यूज दैट इज जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर एंड सो सो अप टू एन माइनस वन ओके इज इट गेस सो वॉट इज दल वैल्यू फॉर एस ऑर्बिटल दैट इज जीरो What will be the L value for p orbital? That is one. What will be the L value for d? That is two. What will be the L value for f? Three. Okay. And so on. So g and h. So uh, we don't have that g to g and h onwards. So we just have to uh, have that values uh, for L up to three itself. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, guys. So we have to know here. L value can depend on that here. N and L can have that values. That is zero, one, two, three. And n minus one. So what here L value is going to be indicating? Okay. So L value here represent here various subshells present in that particular atom. Okay. So here that L value that has to be indicating here a various subshells, guys. Various subshells. Just like that here L value, L L L value is zero for s orbital, one for p, two for d, and three for f. Just like that. So L value can be Representing here, representing various various subshells, various subshell present in present in an atom, present in an atom. Okay. Suppose L value zero for yes, L value. L value one for p, L value two for d, and L value three for f. So this is the thing, guys, right? So here, based on that L value, we are going to have that corresponding subshells. So suppose L value is going to be zero, means the subshell will be here. Yes, L value one will be means so the subshell will be here p and two for d and three for f. So L value indicating that various subshells, isn't it? So next to that. Very much important uh, so factor here that is regarding azimuthal quantum number. Mainly, guys, this azimuthal quantum number is indicating here the shapes of the orbital, shapes of the orbital, and along with here angular momentum of that particular electrons, angular momentum of an electrons in that orbital. These are the main important thing can be so given by here azimuthal quantum number. So very much important. Write down this azimuthal quantum number. It indicates. it indicates very first factor that is shape of the shape of the orbital shape of the orbital along with along with that angular angular momentum momentum of an electron of an electron in an orbital in an orbital okay very much important guys So let's next point. What uh, what we are going to get from that azimuthal quantum number means. So since uh, it indicating here shape of the orbital and angular momentum of an electron. So then what might be the angular momentum of an electron in an orbital? So we'll see that thing. Okay, the that L can be indicating here the angular the angular momentum momentum of an electron. of an electron in an orbital in an orbital can be given by one particular formula guys so that is will be here h by 2 pi square root of l into l plus 1 so this is the most important thing guys angular momentum of an electron in an orbit which is quite different from that of orbital okay there we are going to get here nh by 2 pi in the case of orbit but in the case of orbital we have here angular momentum of an electron would be here h by 2 pi into square root of l into l plus 1 this is the stuff here okay we have to know this thing and l is nothing but here azimuthal quantum number their value could be like that here 1 0 1 2 3 4 so on so okay so this is the main thing and we have to know that so the total number of electrons that has to be present in that orbital 
what means you know suppose uh, in the case of if you can take here s orbital or if you can take here p orbital or if you can take d and f so we have to find out here the total number of electrons corresponding to these particular orbitals then how we are going to get calculated guys so we have one particular formula right so that formula will be like that the total number of the total number of electron electrons present present in an orbital can be given by the formula that is 2 into 2l plus 1 okay 2 into 2l plus 1 suppose i have to calculate here the total number of electron that has to be present in that s subshell so for s we don't know how many electrons are going to be present in that particular subshell but i have one particular formula that is 2l plus 1 so with the help of this particular formula i am going to calculate it so we have formula right now and we have to know that l value for s subshell what will be the l value for s subshell obviously zero okay so that is that answer is going to be zero here and 2 into 1 2 what will be the maximum number of electron that has to be present in that s subshell 2 suppose let's go with that here p okay i don't know in that p subshell how many electrons are going to be there we have to calculate the, this particular formula what will be the uh, l value for p subshell 1 substitute there 2 into 1 so 2 plus 1 3 2 3 is a 6 so the maximum number of electron present in that p subshell 6 just like that if you want to get calculated for d means we are going to get there over 10 for f we are going to get there over 14 guys so with the help of this particular formula we are actually going to calculate the maximum number of electrons in a particular orbital can be calculated by the formula simple formula that is 2 into 2l plus 1 this is the thing okay and we have one particular table guys so how to uh, we have to uh, you know notation can be given for some sort of subshells with the help of n value and l value we are going to have some sort of notations for some different subshell we will see that how we are going to get there over so guys uh, let us take screenshot or and have to make it you know, note down I am going to rub right now this particular information. Yes guys so that is the n value l value subshell notation subshell notation suppose i have here n value will be 1 okay and i am just having here l value 0 if n value is going to be 1 and l value is going to be 0 then what might be the subshell subshell is must be here 1 yes why because what will be the l value for s orbital 0 right that's why taking here n value as a 1 and we are going to taking an l value as a 0 we are going to note notations for some sort of orbital that is subshell that is 1s so we are going to have your own particular subshell as a 1s with that n value 1 and l value 0 and again i have here n value 2 and l value 0 then what might be the subshell notation obviously 2s okay so and i am again I am going to take here L value here 1. Then what might be the subshell notation? Obviously 2p, isn't it? So by taking here n value 2 and L value 0, we are going to have a subshell notation 2s. Why? Because for S subshell, L value is always be 0, and for P subshell, the L value always be 1. So with the help of that n value. So, with the help of that L value, we are going to have two particular subshell here 2s and as well as that 2p. Right now, I am going to have again n value here 3 and L value here 0. Suppose n value 3 and L value 0, what will be the notation? So, L value is 0 for s, right? That is why 3s. And I just have here 1, n value 1 and L value 1 here, n value 3 and L value 1 for. 3p subshell and again I have here L value 2 with the same n value. So, n value is 3 and L value is going to be 2 and I have here one particular subshell that is 3d. Next, I just have to take here n value 4 and L value here 
zero. Then what might be the subshell, guys? 4s. Okay, and I am just have to take here L value is one. What will be the subshell? That is 4p. And I have that n value same and L value here two. That is 4d. And I have that same n value and L value is to be here different. That is three. Then what might be the subshell? 4f. Okay. So this is the so this is how we are going to you know note means we are, uh, making here subshell notation with the help of n l values with the help of n and l values most important guys if you know these things means then that based on these particular thing numericals is going to be very easy okay you actually have to know how to you know uh, notation have to be given for some sort of subshells with the help of n and l value so n value whatever it may be except zero okay n cannot be zero always but l value it must be zero one two three and so up to n minus one so we have to know that here so l value for some sort of subshells so l value is always be zero for yes l value is always be one for here p and l value is always be two for here d and l value is always be three for f we have to know if you know this particular thing means then it will be very easy to calculate this particular thing okay so this is all about here uh, azimuthal quantum number so in the next session we are going to discuss uh, two more quantum numbers are there over that is a uh, uh, magnetic quantum number and as well as that spin quantum number guys so we will discuss there over okay so thank you thank you and all